Hey guys, it's 2 on Maxwell here, I'm back again with another TW video. WrestleMania 36, that was our last episode, that's in the books, I hope you guys enjoyed it. A few questionable booking decisions, you know, finishing with a certain someone on the pedestal of the WWE going forward. Some people liked it, some people didn't agree with it. That's fair enough, that's what wrestling is, it's all about different opinions. But as soon as you close that chapter, you open up a new one. And now we're firmly on the road to WrestleMania 37. Yep, another full year of booking. Um, as I say, I do really just intend to play this save for the whole duration of TW 2016's lifespan because the rally is, I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? I've always, with any sort of simulation game, any sort of management game, once I get properly into a save, I will keep playing it as, as documented with the many seasons on Football Manager, but it's just been year after year. So it's all about retiring the old guard. Maintaining the current guard and then bringing through that NXT or next generation. So, since WrestleMania, of course, I've done the Superstar Shake Up. Um, so, there's a lot of new faces. There's some SmackDown faces on this Raw pay per view as they're now Raw Superstars. And yeah, we just really carry on the Fallout as well. A few matches that are rematches from WrestleMania before they branch off into their own separate storyline so here we go we'll crack on we're on the wwe network we are in new england in the fenway center or fenway park can't remember what it is we have 22 segments taking up 222 minutes no pre-show matches um, as there is a few enhancement matches on the pay-per-view just to give some of the newer wrestlers that little bit of exposure that kind of situation will happen as well in the next pay-per-view as we try and build some characters up um, and give them kind of easier matches on the pay-per-view to get them that little bit more Exposure. Here we go. It's backlash. So, 30,409 in attendance at Fenway Park. We start with a hype video. Now, this hype video basically documents what happened at the, well, near the end of WrestleMania 36, where John Cena became a 17 time world champion. He defeated Daniel Bryan to become the record holder for championship reigns before he was br uh, brutally assaulted and we don't know who it was so we just see a picture of Cena winning the championship celebrating everybody going mental him going backstage and then we just see him covered in blood attacked by who we don't know so A91 cuts the show off to a strong start gets the crowd hotter we then cut to our next hype video and this really just documents the aftermath of that so on Monday Night Raw We've had drafted from SmackDown, or from the Superstar Shake-Up, Virgo Devitt has come over, and also Randy Orton. Now, in this as well, we're the Shake-Up with the general manager. William Regal is now the general manager of Monday Night Raw again. Interesting to you know if he'll turn off the lights every two minutes. But he has decided because we have no WWE champion, it would be completely disrespectful to take the championship off of John Cena. So tonight, we're going to crown the first ever WWE Universal Champion. Wonder if I could integrate it. Here it comes. So it's going to be a fatal four way match to become the first Universal Champion. And A99 hypes up this matchup, which is going to be Devitt versus Brian versus Orton versus Samoa Joe. The Universal storyline gains heat. William Regal has a gimmick that's getting stale. Daniel Bryan not suited to his gimmick. But the crowd got a little hotter as we open up, which should be hopefully. A good pay per view. So we start off, and it's a Bully Cruz has decided he is going to accept the open challenge for the United States champion from the villain, Marty Scurll. B plus 83. Marty's had a few victories on Raw, but it's just been kind of never really in a storyline. But Apollo Cruz is going to step up and take on the villain. And that match was decent. And Marty Skrull defeats Apollo Crews in 1518 by pinfall with a graduation. Marty Skrull makes the first defence of the WWE United States title. The B79, it's okay considering Marty's got a gimmick that's getting stale as well. Seemed a little bit off his game, reducing his performance to a 72, to Apollo's 75. No skill improvements there, and it really just was a decent opener just to kind of, you know, show that he is the champion. And, you know, just get him that easy-ish first title defence. 
Next up, backstage promo is going to be the rematch from WrestleMania as the Revival get one last chance to defeat Jason Jordan and Dolph Ziggler for the tag titles. Ziggler says, you know, he took Jason Jordan under his wing. He's glad to see the rookie saw sense and they are hoping to have a good title run to continue going forward at B82. Ziggler getting better at his gimmick, but also foreshadowing a heel turn here. The match itself was decent, but it did see the Revival defeat Ziggler and Jason Jordan in 11.37 when Dash Wilder defeated Dolph Ziggler by pinfall with the unskinny bop to win the WWE World Tag Team Championships or the Raw Tag Team Championships. A B79 is decent. I just feel the Revival are going to be top dogs on Raw eventually. Um, so the titles are going back on them. There is going to be more tag teams coming along. Um, I do have plans. I may as well just advise this plan because they won't basically they'll just appear in a tag match eventually after a few raw appearances together it's likely I'm going to split Flamita and Kalisto as a tag team Kalisto's probably going to go solo and I'm going to try Flamita with Akuma giving Aeroboy a chance to go solo so I'm going to go with that going forward and yeah should be decent B79 and yeah, decent matchup in the tag team division. A couple of good performances there and a few negatives as well. Next up, we've got a music video to promote Asuka. Um, we've decided we are going to push her massively going forward and um, get her back into competing with the top uh, female athletes in the company to try and, as I say, help develop as many stars in the future as well. So her hype video gets a C-58. And her matchup had decent wrestling, but it didn't have much heat. And it saw Asuka defeat Crazy Mary Dobson in 8 minutes 43 with the Billiken. C60, good performance from Asuka. Crazy Mary not too happy with the, the job in here, but had to be done. May seek to change it to Sarah Logan to reflect real life. Should to be kept strong as well, which did hamper the, the rating overall. But as I say, we got to do what we need to do and holding back matchup probably made this a poorer rating than it should have been. Next up we got a hype video promoting Switchblade, Jay White. Um, we were going to push Jay White strong just because he had developed for so many years in Lucha Underground so I feel he's ready to go. So D41, um, just a usual match for him. I haven't got a Switchblade photo for him yet so we'll wait till that pops up. Um, if anybody's got one, if you want to fire me a, a link to it on the old Twitter, Twitter on Maxwell, uh, we'll get that added in going forward. But CPOS 67, it was a decent matchup. Didn't have much heat and Switchblade defeats Kurt Hawkins in 820 with the missile kick. Both guys with 60 performance. Overall, a good matchup. We see Switchblade move on to bigger things. We have a decent matchup. It saw Rusev defeat Eddie Edwards in 14 12 by submission. A B78, just again pushing Rusev forward. Better performance from him than Eddie Edwards. The King of Europe storyline has advanced, but lost a little bit of heat. And Rusev improves in Rumble skills. Overall, good matchup. And we make Rusev look strong. Next up, we've got a promo with The Miz. The Miz has moved over in the Superstar Shakeup from SmackDown Live. He's came here looking for more opportunities, more championship matches to get him back into the spotlight. And we are better to start than winning the European Championship from Kota Ibushi. So A90, good promo there. It's Mizzy's opportunity, it's Mizzy's chance. And it's a great matchup, it's actually a superb matchup with superb wrestling and great heat. And it sees Ibushi win in 1801 after DQ. Ibushi makes the second defence of the European title. Miz just decides to take a cheap shot. Gets caught and it backfires, but a great matchup for both guys. Storyline will advance and gain heat. Ibushi with a 93, Miz showing he belongs there with a 92. Next up, we've got Braun Strowman with GM William Regal. He doesn't really beat him up, he just threatens him and just says it's a disgrace. He's been putting the shell for so long, he should be in the Universal title match and he demands competition. So he threatens William Regal. We'll see where this goes with a B. 88. Next up, a promo from Dana Brooke, an A94, and it's her saying Charlotte got lucky at WrestleMania, and she's going to prove tonight that she is the most dominant female in the WWE, and she's going to take back the Raw Women's Championship. 
match itself. Finally, an A matchup between the ladies. Finally, I can't believe it actually was better than a WrestleMania matchup. There was about to had superb wrestling and great heat. Charlotte defeated Dana Brooke in 14.35 by submission with a figure 4 leg lock. Charlotte makes the second defence of our Women's Championship. And that's an A92. Both ladies with great performances and a definite lack of psychology on display. Probably took us away from being a 5 star match, which is quite frankly crazy. But Charlotte improves flying skills. Just the psychology and consistency of Dana. That is just spectacular. So full credit to Charlotte and Dana Brooke getting us. Such a good rating. After the matchup, Charlotte celebrating that she wins, and SmackDown Live competitor Nikki Cross comes in and beats the living hell out of Charlotte after a grueling contest. But she's signaling the fact that she could be the next contender for Charlotte's championship on SmackDown. But in 94, and it just shows that Charlotte's got enemies both on Raw and on SmackDown Live. Next up to one of our Main event matchups and Bray Wyatt cuts a promo hyping the matchup with Alistair Black. It's the B plus 86, but it's really a case of Bray Wyatt is going to end Alistair Black once and for all and prove that he is the the man around this place, you know, that these mind games from Alistair Black will no longer go on. Uh, the match not as good as Armenia match, but still decent. There was a good matchup with great wrestling and good heat, and Alistair Black defeated Bray Wyatt. In 2306 by stoppage when Bray Wyatt couldn't continue. So pretty much he's KO'd him with all those kicks he does. But B plus 88 is okay. Better performance from Bray to Alistair, but it is about building Alistair Black up, taking him to the next level. Bray Wyatt really getting back to his real life persona of just putting people over. Then hyping up for a main event, Randy Orton cuts a promo on Fergal Devitt. Devitt's cheap shotted his way to a couple of wins. Randy did get the last laugh of an RKO on Raw last week, but it really is a case of Randy Orton wants to be the first Universal Champion, and he's going to make sure he beats him, Samoa Joe, and Daniel Bryan in doing so. And the match itself, okay, not the greatest in the world. Uh, an A89, so still, I, I can't really be disappointed at an A rating. It was about to have superb wrestling and great heat. And it saw Fergal Devitt defeat Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, and Samoa Joe in 25-50 when Fergal Devitt defeated Randy Orton with a pinfall by pinfall with a double knee gut buster. This was following interference from Nick Jackson, and we also had Matt Jackson distract Randy Orton to allow Fergal Devitt to become the inaugural Universal Champion. So I think you get the gist here. If they were good 90 performances, Daniel Bryan not suited to his gimmick. He's also got better technical skills. No real negatives, it just didn't click as much. And of course, we have only had four segments, but we are turning. Both Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, heel to join Fergal Devitt. I think you know where we're going with that one. And B plus 86, Universal Champion Fergal Devitt, a toxic Fergal Devitt, ends the show to B plus 86. So overall, an A92 which quite frankly was probably carried by The Miz versus Kota Ibushi and Dana Brooke and Charlotte. So I think we'll give Dana, Charlotte and The Miz the praise for their matchup. So we'll compliment them all on a good performance. And yeah, that was a pretty solid show. A couple of building up of the new talents, but a couple of guys just showing they're ready to take the company forward. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. We'll just quickly... Go into the main screen to see what's uh, uh, happening, see the aftermath of it. So, Backlash done well, that's good to see. TNA are trying to give Mr. Natural. That's cool. Antonio Honda's to marry, whatever that is. Yeah, nothing really here apart from just saying we had a good show. Uh, a couple of people unhappy, a couple of people needing a better push. So, Eddie Orengo will give a good push to, that's obviously the, the referee, but he's really good in this. Probably give Kurt Hawkins uh, an extension. We are trying to pinch Rob Echoes and Courtney Rush, or Rosemary, from TNA. 42.62 rating on the WWE Network, so that's good to see there. Fergal Devitt doesn't like Asuka, and Jason Jordan has a fan in Daniel Bryan, not Kurt Angle, though. So I'll keep them there just so I can remember to do those extensions after the end of the episode. So cheers for watching guys, uh, if you did enjoy the show let me know what you thought and uh, drop a wee thumbs up if you thought it was poor, 
anything you weren't happy with, uh, any decisions or any booking decisions you don't like, let me know your thoughts on it going forward. Uh, of course, we still have that big dilemma of who actually did take out John Cena, so if you get any more guesses towards that, let me know. And yeah, just any comments regarding WWE in general, wrestling in general, your own saves, how you find the TW, as we're already now 16 months into its life, its uh, time scale. So cheers for watching guys, much appreciated. I'll catch you all next time for some more TW Wrestling. Bye-bye.